Hello brothers, this is Brother Trey here again. Um, this is today's post from on December 12th of 2022. And it stems from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 43 through 51. And it reads, Did y'all ever notice in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 43 through 51, that Goliath cursed David by the names of his gods, and then David said he came in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Then David, David says in verse 46 that the Lord would deliver Goliath into his hand. Then further down in the verse, he says that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then David performed the words that he promised and prevailed over Goliath. Now let's look at this. David was an Israelite. They believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was still under the promise of Abraham that he would that God would curse those who would curse him. What did Goliath do? Now, he cursed David by the name of his gods. So not only did he curse him, but he cursed him by the name of false gods. Some other God. Name is some other in the name of some other God. Also, since David was the anointed next king of Israel, then he was protected and had the favor of God. The hand of God was upon David. He would represent the Father as king of Israel later. Therefore, God wanted to have wanted David to have honor. I think most of all in this situation, God wanted to bring glory to his name. Goliath came in the name of his gods. David came in the name of the God of Israel. God would prove himself to be the true God. His servant would overcome crazy odds to bring great glory to his name. Not only was it nation against nation, which was Israel against the Philistines, but it was also against all, but it was also kingdom versus kingdom. And God versus gods or false idols. It was a spiritual battle. David's spirit of faith, or which is a uh, manifestation of Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit upon David gave gave him strength to win the battle. God had equipped him when the Holy Ghost came upon him the day that he was anointed. By Samuel, and who was prepared in the field while his father, while watching his father's sheep. Now, you, we all know that David. I didn't put it in this post, but you know David protected the sheep that had taken the lamb. He killed the lion, and he had killed the bear that had taken the lamb. Uh, God gave him the tools to win, but it wasn't by his own might that he. One, even though David had destroyed the bear and destroyed the lion, but it was by his faith, by the skill that God had given him. It was by the Spirit of God within him. Because we, it's not by might, but by power, but not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. All in all. So we all, we have all learned through David that we have, can overcome obstacles. We can overcome our Goliaths no matter what or who they are. We just have to have faith and remember whose we are and whose name that we represent in battle. His spirit gives us strength through all adversity. We can overcome addiction. We can break curses because David destroyed the word curses that came out of Goliath's, Goliath's mouth by killing him or silencing him. We also... And overcome those that come against us, whether physically or spiritually. Many times it's both. A principality may send someone to come against you to stop the work that you are doing for the Lord. Above it all, God will prepare us for the battle. He will ensure our victory so that we may glorify his name. And, hit, and he will make sure that, it is, that it is, his name is above every name. All of the gods will be brought down. Whether it be 
people who call themselves God or who are representing another God or influenced by another spirit, but they don't know about it. Um, all the gods will be brought down. All the evil spirits will be brought down if they're influencing. And he will, God will receive the glory. We just need to trust in him, trust him in the battle, no matter what it looks like, no matter what, how big the obstacles are. We just have to use the weapons and skills and experience God's given us that he's prepared us with for such a time as this. Now, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what battle you're facing. I just know that if you are a born again believer in Jesus Christ, then you have all you need. But if you're struggling right now and you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you need to call upon the name of the Lord right now. Because he will rescue you in a time of trouble, no matter what adversities you're facing. I just know if you're born again believer in Jesus Christ, then you have all you need. The Spirit of Christ within you. The Holy Spirit that gives you power and authority. And the, the Spirit and the favor of God is upon you. Jesus intercedes for you. He is with you in the battle. He is with you in the storm. You shall overcome it, overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. There's power in the blood. And, he sh and you shall testify and give glory to the Lord in Jesus' name. Just trust him. He knows what he's doing. Your victory is coming. And he is ready to receive the glory through you. So just trust him. It's coming. Your victory is coming. It just hasn't manifested yet. He knows what he's doing. He's omnipresent. He knows where you are. He's omnipotent. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful and mighty. He's strong, stronger than any enemy that can come against us. He is. He can break any chain. He can heal any wound. He can resurrect. Dead things, dead relationships, dead partnerships. He's going to resurrect the dead. But he can resurrect as people that are as if they're dead. They can. He can give new life to the grieving. So trust him. Be patient. It's coming. You shall have the victory. Just trust and wait on the Lord. It's coming. In Jesus' mighty name.